Deuteronomy 10, verse 11 reads, And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, and they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give unto them. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. You may take your seats. Looking back at that uh, 12th verse, the very first part, it said, And the Lord, and now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? For a subject today, brothers and sisters, I would like to talk about what does God want from me? What does God want from me? Have you ever asked yourself a question? What is it that God really wants from me? What is it that God wants me to do? What does God require of me? A God that sits high yet look low, what could he possibly want from me? When I'm all just but one person, lonely, when I'm here going through the, the motions, what in the world can God really want from me? Deuteronomy chapter 10 is a chapter that tells just what God wants from us. It goes and begins to talk to us about what God requires of his people. And what does any parent want from a child? What does a parent want us to do as children? God is no different than that very same thing. He wants the same thing from the children of Israel that any good parent wants of the children. So what does God want from us? What does God require from us? There are a few things, if we get into the text, that God requires of his people. The very first thing that you will see there in the text, it says the very first thing, God requires that we fear him. To fear God, my brothers and sisters, means that we got to reverence God. And to reverence him means to honor him. And if I'm going to honor him, then I'm going to respect him as well. We give him the highest respect, highest honor, highest reverence when we fear our God. A, a child who doesn't fear a parent don't respect a parent. I stop by to tell you now today, mothers and, and, and fathers, if your child won't respect you, they don't fear you, they will not respect you. And anything that you don't respect, you don't care how it do, what it does, and how it goes about things. You need to tell your children, if nothing else, you need to respect me. Yes, yes, yes. See, 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 we got a lot of kids that are cussing and fussing and going around and calling mama everything but a child of God, going around pulling mama and daddy's name down to the dirt. But I stopped by to tell you, if you cannot respect your mama, you will not respect your God. God said, if you're going to come in here, what I need from you is to fear me. I need you to understand that you got to fear me. I've learned something in my days of coming up. When I came up where I come from, they call it home training. And mom and daddy said, boy, when you leave this house, you better make sure you show your good home training. Because home training is a reflection on mama and daddy. And daddy said, if you go out there, mama said the same thing. If you go out there and I find out that you ain't showing good home training, I got something for you. God wants the same thing from his children. He wants to learn that we need to have some good home training when we go out in the world. See, see, we need to have some home training. If it ain't no home training, then ain't nothing. If nothing is put in them, nothing will come out of them. See, today, brothers and sisters, I learned today about a lot of these younger generations, these younger mamas and daddies, they, understand, they don't understand something. They think that saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am is all that is bad. You're making them feel like slaves. No, what you're teaching them is how to respect your house. 
You need to learn to tell them how to respect your house, respect who you are, respect your authority. And God is saying the same thing. If you're going to be my child, you got to learn to fear me. Yes, we got to learn today. We got to learn to fear God because God deserves our respect. Yes, sir. He deserves respect. See, God is not trying to intimidate us when he tells us to fear him. This is what I want you to understand. He's not telling you to be intimidated. about. But what he's telling you to do is that you got to learn to respect him for who he is and his authority. Yes, sir. See, see, we respect mom and daddy because of who they are. And they'll throw. I learned something. If I talk back to mama, I found myself getting up off the floor. <laughs> See, I don't, know how I, look. See, I don't know how it happened. All I know is I just started moving my mouth and I was on the floor. Because mama didn't play that right there. See, see, God is saying the same thing today. We got to learn to quit telling God what we think God should be doing. We telling God what we think he should be doing in our lives. Quit talking back to go. All right. We got to learn to respect who God is. See, if there is no fear, if there's no reverence, if there's no honor, if there's no respect, then you will not fall in line with what God wants. God is saying today, hey, I, I want you to walk in my ways, but in order for you to walk in my ways, you got to first reverence me. You got to first realize who I am to you. That I am not your equal. That, that's something my mom and dad. How, how many have ever seen that today? Well, a child come up and call mom and daddy by their first name. Huh? That's whole. I, I never would have thought of come out of my mouth to call my mama by her first name. Ever. Because, I, again, I'd have found myself getting up off the floor. What I'm trying to say is that we have got to put back into our children and to, our, and to them to understand they are not our equals. Because if you th they think they're your equal, then an equal can speak to you any kind of way. They can say anything, do anything, act any kind of way. We got to learn to understand there is a difference between me as mama and daddy and you as a child. God is saying the same thing. There's a difference between me as God and you as my child. You got to learn to reverence me and respect me for who I am. So, 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 so why, how, and how do we go in and respect God? We respect God, like I said, not because it's our duty, but out of respect. We respect him because of who he is. God says, first thing you have to do is fear me. You have to reverence me. And, and, and brothers, I, I begin, sisters, I begin to understand something. God is showing us that all of these have to go in order. You, you got to fear me before you can do all the rest of these things that I'm asking you to do. I'm only going to talk about three today. I'm going to talk about fear. I'm going to talk about walking with him. And I'm going to talk about loving him. He, 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 he says right here, the next thing that you got to do, he says, you got to walk with me. No, 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 notice what the text says, walk in all his ways. Not, not, not some of his ways, but all his ways. See, see, I, I'm learning that today too many people are trying to pick and choose what they want to do. See, 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 some people say, I'll follow that rule because that don't take me from doing what I want to do. But God is saying, if you're going to be on my team, if you're going to be on my side, you got to follow me all the way. He, he said, you got to walk in all my ways. Like I said, not some of God said, I need you to walk it out. Well, I, I got no young kids in here. So, so sometimes you got to learn to walk it out. And I ain't talking about that walk it out on what you're talking about on there. I'm talking about walk it out for God. You got to learn to walk it out. See, many today only want to follow God and do what God, what they want God to mean, what God wants them to do when it doesn't go against what they're doing. He, he, he says it. See, with God, it's all or nothing. I want you to hear me on this today, church. God deals in absolutes. He says, you either absolutely love me or you don't. You either absolutely mine or you're not. You either absolutely all the way in or you're not. 
God said, I can't deal with lukewarm. I can't deal with half cold. I can't deal when you're trying to do it your way and have your cake and eat it too. You got to be all the way in or you got to be all the way out. He, he said, I deal in absolutes. And he said, in this absolute way, you got to learn to walk with me. Now, 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 what does he mean by walk with me? What is God saying? You got to walk with me in all my ways. In all your ways, you got to walk with me. Walk in the Bible, it talks about how you live. He, he, he's saying, you got to live in a servant. God says, I require that you live in a way that's pleasing unto me. And many times, we're living in ways, brothers and sisters, people are living in ways that don't please our God. I don't tell you that people don't learn how to go out on Friday night, Saturday night, and do all they want to do. Right. They'll come up in here in church on Sunday morning, lift up on their hands, and tell the Lord, hallelujah, I praise the Lord, after living all kind of ways. Yes, I don't tell you, I don't been some places where people got, got smart. They wear the same clothes. Go out, shake what the mama gave you. Go out and sip what all you can sip and do what you all you can do and come right open in God's house in the same clothes and talk about you praising God. I, 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 I'm not joking that the people will do it. People will go in and live any kind of way that does not please God. Watch this right here. In Ephesians, the fourth chap chapter, they talked about walking in a way that's worthy of your calling. If you've been called out of sin, if you have been called and put your hand in God's hand, there's something should be different about your life than everybody else's life. He said, you should look like the world. How many remember uh, 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 PBS? I, I know I'm dating myself a little bit. It used to be on, on Sesame Street. It used to be one of the things that said, one of these things is doing his own thing. One of these things ain't the same. Hey, y'all remember that? Y'all come on. I, come on. I look, we used to sit in there learning about the bill. We learned all that kind of stuff on Sesame Street. And we learned that something was different about one of those things. And God is saying that you need to be the difference in somebody's life. The way you live, he said, you need to live in a way that's different than everybody else. He said, you got to walk in a way that's worthy of your calling. If God has given you a, if, if God was to give you a progress report today, I thought about this here. My, my young people ain't here today. I thought about this here. And I said, if God was to give a progress report and say, I must check you where you are right now and let you know how you're doing, what would our grade be? That's a personal question. Don't know nobody, don't, don't point no fingers. Don't point no fingers. That's a personal grade right there. God wants to know that you're progressing, that you're living in a way that pleases him. Ephesians chapter 5 says you have to walk in love. Yes, he, he, he says that you have to walk in a way that brings honor and glory to his name. God is saying you got to walk it like you're talking. All right. You got to learn to walk it like you're talking. Yes. See, see, I, I sit in Sunday school and I... I a lot of times, I, I don't really want to say anything, but it's hard to sit back there and be quiet when you got D. I, that, 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 that the man that know the Bible through, through, and through, backwards, forward, forward, and backwards, and whatnot. And he be saying some profound things. And I be sitting there like, man, Lord, he walking like he talking. He, he, he live it. He speak it. He, all of those things are displayed through Deacon Rosier back there. And that's the thing that God is trying to tell us to do. We got to learn to walk it like we talk it. Why? Because God said the way you walk matters to me. Why does it matter, brothers and sisters? Why does it matter? God is saying because somebody is looking at your walk. Somebody is measuring you by your walk. They're measuring God by your walk. If you let God down, they put every Christian in that boat. He said, you got to walk it like you're talking. Why is it so important to walk it? Mark chapter 8, it talks about a requirement to be a disciple of God. He says, you got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after him. He, he didn't say every day will be sunshine. He didn't say every day, excuse me. He didn't say every day will come and, 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 and it's going to be this, that, other. But God says, that you got to deny yourself. You got to take your cross 
and you got to follow me. Personal walk. Personal talk. Personal relationship. Personal denying. Personal struggles and a personal relationship. He said, you got you to you do it in this way. You got to come in and follow after me. Like I say, every day. We had, I don't know about over in Burke County, but over there in Augusta, it's been raining every day. Yeah. My backyard look like hay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get out there and walk in because even just walking, I sink. It's marshy. So our life is the same way. God is saying, every day ain't going to be sunshine. But will you live the life that I've told you to live? Will you still walk the walk? Will you still talk the talk? No matter what's going on, will you put your hand in God's hand and say, Jesus, walk with me? How many remember that old song? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. How many come? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. What did it say? Whiles I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus. Come on, sis, I'll find you. Walk with me. Hey, come on. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Come on. Hold my hand on, hold my hand, while I'm on, hey, Jesus, Jesus, I have to sing it sometimes, Jesus, walk with me, hey, what is it? Be my God, Lord. Be my God. Be my God, Lord. Be my God. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want Jesus. Walk with me. Come on, come on, sir. Come on. Hey, hey, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey. One more verse, one more verse. Hold my hand, Lord. I can't make it without it. Hold my hand. Come on. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Wow. church open. I didn't get to finish it. All right. We'll pick up we'll pick up love next week. It just felt the need to tell God to walk with us. Some of us, like I said, we don't realize we're on a tedious journey. We're going through some things in this lifetime. And you need Jesus to walk with you. The doors of the church are open. Let be one today. I want Jesus, Amen. Oh Lord, walk with me.
Sometimes, brothers and sisters, sometimes a song can say it best for us. Sometimes a prayer can be said that say it best for us. Amen. Sometimes a word can go forth and say it best for us. There's so much going on around us, brothers and sisters. 